And I want to talk to you tonight about renovating and re-envisioning and maybe rejecting conventionally accepted ideas about art and audience. So audience, I can barely see you with these lights, is generally conflated with community. And community is conflated with need. We talk about the community as if people are this kind of monolithic mass. And what that means is that art's experiences are no longer viewed as an exchange amongst equals. And what that means is that art's experiences are robbed of their strange and enduring magic. And when I think about art and magic, I think about my first job when I came to New York City to go to art school. And it was an AmeriCorps gig at a tutoring program in literacy for low-income kids run out of the basement of a school in Chelsea that the program kids were bused to after their school day. And I had no real qualifications, since youthful naivete and inadequate training don't much count. And there was this little boy who, whenever he was feeling anxious, sad, uncomfortable, or bored, he would very slowly and dramatically state to no one in particular, I'm putting on my pantyhose. And he would then mime with immense dignity and very mysterious theatrical timing the gesture of the stocking going on one leg and then the other. And then the little shimmy, ladies, you know, to get the nylon over the hips. Do I need to explain the extreme virtuosity of these gestures when the body in use has a stout second grader's legs? This high. There must have been a muse, a model, who he had studied very carefully to replicate the drama of this moment. Now, the putting on of the pantyhose could go on for as long as he felt the need. He could really take his time with the little gestures of straightening the stretchy fabric, which was invisible and not real. But he made you see it. Now, one of my fellow AmeriCorps employees, who was an older man, would snarl at him to stop being a, you know, it was awful. But the little boy, apparently accustomed to the rote cruelty of adults, would carry on. And as long as I worked there, I would see him pause say the words, and begin to put on his pantyhose whenever he felt the need, in the middle of whatever else might be going on. Why am I telling you this? Because this, for me, remains the finest act of performative intervention art I have ever witnessed. It was a protest hurled down against muteness and dullness and invisibility and monotony, against cheap, high-calorie, low-nutrition snack, against basements and waiting in line and exhaust fumes. We need art. We deserve joy. We're worthy of joy. Life isn't some fluffy nonsense. Art isn't some fluffy nonsense, a luxury just for a few. Life is too hard. We can't survive without the large or sprawl expressiveness of color, texture, symbol, half-remembered song lyrics sung loudly and badly along with the car radio so you won't crash the car after a long shift of work. 
We need art and magic. So every year, out of the 13 years that my partner Yvonne Davis and I have run Gallery of Faro, our nonprofit art space, as you heard here in downtown Newark, we've challenged ourselves to think differently about art and audience. And this spring, instead of asking people, remember, the community, to come to the gallery, we decided to take the gallery out to the world, to the street, to the people. So we built the Afero Mobile Portrait Studio. It is a fully equipped photographic portrait studio run off a generator out of a seven by 12 foot cargo trailer. And this spring and summer, we've been to barbecues and flea markets and warehouse parties and outside of church. And initially, our goal was to photograph 350 Norkers for Nork's 350th anniversary. But by early August, we'd photographed 1,000 people. And we realized we didn't really want to stop. And it seemed that the public didn't want us to either. Now, my partner and I both studied photography. I love photography. But with any long-time love, photography is rife with ghosts and very troubling power dynamics, especially the classic photographic documentary tradition. So we had to set a couple project parameters as follows. The first, we have to be invited to go to some place with the mobile portrait studio. So this means that a conventional project timeline has to be completely abandoned. We often don't know where we're going next. But one invitation leads to another, leads to another, and we get drawn along into different communities. And that's such an honor. Next, everyone that we photograph owns their image. It belongs to them. They get a high-resolution file with Gallery of Faro retaining limited non-commercial rights to an exhibition this October of some of the portraits and to talking about the program like I am now. But the person who's photographed can do whatever they want with their image. They can use it as a commercial headshot. They can print it and give it to their mom. They can make art out of it. They can hang it on a wall. And lastly, this one's really important, the difference between looking at someone and seeing them. Looking at someone with a camera is not the same as seeing them. Yvonne talks about how looking is a kind of judgment. And seeing someone requires that you're open to having a new experience, to learning something new, and to relinquishing some control. So every person who's photographed has a singular private experience with their photographer. And some really interesting things happen. A man who might really walk kind of tough on the street, inside the portrait studio, he might reveal a dazzling and unguarded smile. A little girl might seem to look off agelessly to some future that's so far away, most of us in this audience will not even live to see it. So speaking about the future, we envisioned this project as a kind of useful visual civic archive, a kind of open time capsule where anyone can access it as desired a week from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now. So I'm going to put a whole bunch of words together. Ready? So a useful, visual, shared, open, public, civic archive. And that project is one of many that we've done at Gallery of Faro that comes out of relinquishing and sharing control, collaborating with and in community, and understanding one's own value, what one has to give, by understanding and appreciating the value of others, what they bring. So as it turns out, in surrender, there is freedom. And in resistance, whether it be to the cruelty of adults when you're small and a little different, or to conventionally accepted ideas about art and audience, there is freedom. 
And that is where I find my joy. So we need art, all of us. We deserve joy. We're worthy of joy, all of us. So let's all of us put on our pantyhose one leg at a time. We'll all feel so much better. Thank you.